All right, so we have Mike here listening to the... Uh, Hello, everybody. M6s with the Solution 530 integrated and the 60.8 monoblocks as well as the XP32. So let's go over your impression of the 60.8s with the XP32 and the M6. Give me an overview, overall view of what you heard here. Well, first of all, there's no doubt that these are both outstanding amplifier solution and pass but if you had told me before i auditioned them that there was going to be such a discrepancy in sound i wouldn't have believed it was going to be the way it ended up the pass these little 60.8s are unbelievable amplifiers i couldn't believe what i was listening to um i understand we got a three box pre-amplifier and that definitely helps things and we're comparing you know mono blocks and a three box preamp to an integrated um, but if you compare the MSRP uh, the pass is still considerably less I will tell you the sound stage of the pass was much bigger um, I felt that the solution as soon as we switched over even though it was warmed up the sound stage collapsed in it had a harder kind of glassier kind of um sound the past when we were playing these certain tracks had much more decay was much more natural this really sounded kind of hard glassy kind of you know um not authentic whereas when i was listening to the past amps i couldn't believe that these were the 60.8s i mean I've heard them before, but I didn't think they could do what they were doing on a world-class speaker. And um, they, it, it just proves, you know, Pass really is such a, it's a great, it's just a great value, a great company, great product, great designer. It, they do a really fantastic job. I was really impressed. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, why would you put, you know, 60.8s with, you know, $172,000 speakers? But, you know, if you had been here to hear it, you would believe how good it really does sound. That being said, we have brought Jay some toys and he will be playing with a world-class amplifier which he will roll out for all of you. And we're gonna help him set it up here now and um, on his channel, pay attention and you'll see what it's gonna do to these incredible speakers. And just a shout out to these speakers. As many times as I've heard the M6s, I will tell you, they are sounding great in Jay's room. We're gonna tweak a little bit. I'm hearing a couple of things I think we can do uh, better with the vocals specifically, but Jay has done an excellent job and they are, they are certainly a world-class speaker. The bass is outstanding, world-class. I just can't believe how good the bass sounds. Do you think it's an attribute of the room as far as how the bass is, or do you think the speaker just simply is that much um, you know, uh, better in terms of uh, the, you know, the bottom and control, the tightness of the speaker. Because I personally, when I had the M3s here, I didn't get that fullness that you're referring to. Um, it, w it was, there was some bass, but not at the level. And some of my viewers are actually saying they hardly hear enough bass, but maybe you can give them a little more insight as to what you're hearing here with the bass. Um, you know, we have, compared to the M3s, you know, the M6s have much bigger bass drivers. It's a much bigger cabinet in addition to the fact that it's a, a monocoque design as opposed to the M3. Um, so the bass in here is phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's full, it's tight, it's fast, which is exactly what you'd, want, you'd expect from a sealed box speaker and you know, outstanding drivers that uh, Magico uses. So I think the bass in here, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. I, I don't know how we can improve the bass. I think we can sharpen up the vocals a little bit. Agreed, yeah. So we can tweak it just a little bit, minute uh, changes. But really, I mean, from the seating position, the room with the combination of this speaker, I, I think the bass is absolutely perfect. Um, you know, what I was thinking, and I was trying to tell my viewers, some of them are saying the speaker is sounding a little digital, a little artificial, and my comment, my feedback to them was, you know, it, you got to think about the upstream components. I'm thinking it's a little more of the DCS sound that you're getting through the speaker, a little bit of that digital feeling, uh, certain tracks to be specific. Um, I do hear that there is... At times, I wish there was a little more warmth, but I think it's a DCS because I've lived with it long enough to know that even with my Wilsons, the Alex, uh, at times I got a little bit of that edginess at times, but I, I could be just the nature of the digital um, 
you know, um, components. I feel personally a different DAC could really allow the speaker to not sound as what some are saying artificial. I think right. if we got a, something a little warmer sounding, we can begin to change the presentation. Do you feel there is, what do you feel about the brightness uh, no, conversation. I, I don't hear any brightness whatsoever. What I do, what I would say is that these speakers are much more revealing, transparent than what maybe you've had in the past. Um, so you're going to hear the minute changes and you're certainly going to hear truly what the source sounds like. So something like a R to R DAC, uh, ladder DAC, uh, something like a uh, perhaps even a tube DAC or a tube preamp, you know, is certainly going to add some color. So a lot of times, you know, speakers have their own coloration. Um, some are very neutral and transparent like Magico, and some are very colored. You know, a box speaker, a wooden box speaker like a Harbeth, there's, there's a lot of characteristics of that speaker Im imparted onto the music. The Magicos are giving you the truth. They're giving you what the components are doing. They're giving you what the music really is. Uh, nothing added, nothing taken away. So um, if you want to add a little bit of flavor, a little, a little salt, a little pepper, then you can certainly um, add a tube DAC, a tube preamp, a, a ladder DAC, something like that. The changes that we've been discussing and your viewers will see um, I think are the right direction to get the combination that you're going to absolutely love with the speaker. So everyone needs to pay attention because the, the planning has been there and there's some amazing things coming. Some of the, uh, you know, uh, comments that I have always received is you always hear the Wilson guy who loves Wilson for, you know, the strengths, of course, and the magical guy. And I always go back to the same thing. It's, you know, both of them are personally speaking, great speakers, but Absolutely. they just come at you, they present things differently. That's Absolutely. just about the presentation and what you want the speaker to do. Um, you know, a lot of people, and again, before I even had the magical M6s, were always saying, oh, you know, there's just, they're cold, they're sterile, they're, they're just, you know, not uh, as musical. And, you know, I don't really think that's, especially with the M6, right? Because really, right. I have been playing more with the M6 or the M3s, actually, the M series in general. I just think that I never picked up that feeling of sterile, that cold feeling that people are talking about. I never got that with the M series. I just felt that it was very smooth and relaxed. And, and if it got bright, it could be, a you know, maybe a conversation of the cables you're using, right? The speaker cables you're using or the source you're using or maybe even the amplification. Right. might be the wrong amplifier for it so um but i have heard the m2s at your store i was very impressed i love the m3s you know i'm a big speaker guy yeah. you know i love big speakers um and uh, i really really didn't think that they would sound the m6s as good as they're sounding right now in my room because when i heard them at your show a florida expo florida audio show in 2019 right. uh, they, you know you did m900us right I remember you did m900us with the c900 uh, preamp and then we had um, a reel-to-reel -reel deck, an Avid turntable, and I believe we were using a, a Luxman um, a DO8U at that time for our for our digital. Um, so you know that that was a little. It's you know the Luxman stuff has got a little bit of sweetness to it, um, very musical. So it, it, it's a, it was a great match with the the Magicos for sure. I will tell people that you know if your exposure to Magico was with the the Q series or one of the you know very early on um, products from Magico, that the sound is just so much better today than it was 15 years ago. So it's I've had a lot of people that you know they heard the Q5 many many years ago and they're like well I don't like that sound and they've automatically dismissed it. Well, the S series, the M series, and the A series all are extremely good and i would encourage everybody to go and hear them they're very different do you have any anything that you can tell someone who's contemplating magic or that perhaps they're thinking of making the move uh, they're afraid of buying the speaker for example do you feel that there are certain requirements when it comes to the room that they need to have for a magical speaker or do you feel that you can make that speaker work in just about any environment what, what's your 
Because, you know, there's always the conversation with Wilson. I've been very vocal yeah. to my viewers about Wilson Audio. It's very room dependent. A lot of speakers need a room, of course. That there's no question about it. But some speakers need it more than others in terms of the, you know, the the distance from the the rear wall or you know the side walls or you know electrostatics as well. Right. right? Every speaker has different requirements. Right. Um, well, how do you feel? What requirements do you think someone needs to have uh, a room? What kind of room would you say? Um, at a bare minimum, do you need to have to make a magical and or just any magical work? Well, as you know, I used to own the Wilson Alexias myself personally at home, and I tried for over a year to get them to work in my room. And let's just chalk it up that my room was difficult and couldn't really get them to the level that I wanted to. Um, the Magicos we have installed in some of the smallest rooms you could imagine. Uh, we put a pair of uh, S3 Mark IIs in a 10 by 11 um, which was a gentleman's office in his condo in St. Petersburg. And I remember looking at the room going, man, this is going to be a tough one. And honest to goodness, I couldn't believe the sound that we were getting out, getting out of that room. It was fantastic. So we've been able to put, you know, I mean, large Magicos in small rooms and, and small Magicos in, in medium to larger rooms. So we've played the, the A3 in the 20 by 25 room in the store. And we've put the, you know, the M3 in the 14 by 18 room, and we've gotten great results. And with customers, we've had really good results. The sealed box cabinet makes setup for a dealer uh, a dream. It's a lot easier to work with or an end user who wants to tweak a little bit. You really don't get that super active bass nodes that you would get with a lot of speakers and including some ported speakers as well. So, no, the Magicos, I, I don't have a fear. There's very few times where I would say, I mean, maybe the M6s in a 10 by 10, maybe. Yeah, correct, yeah. Of maybe. Um, yeah. But um, I've seen them work in some pretty, pretty small spaces, and they've worked well.